Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are continuing in chapters 14 and 15, which is about acids and bases, and right now we're jumping into chapter 15, which is about acid-base titrations and pH. So, first of all, let's talk about aqueous solutions, which means water is the solvent, and the concept of pH. So, we haven't talked about this very much before, but there's something called the self-ionization of water. So when you have water hanging out in a beaker or whatever, to a small extent it is self-ionizing, producing the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. So two water molecules can interact to produce a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion, again by proton transfer. And again, if we wrote it in equation form, two H2Os produce H3O plus and OH minus aqueous. Now notice here and here we have the double arrows. What that means is that this is an equilibrium, so it's proceeding in both directions. So at 25 degrees C, one mole of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions exist in 10 to the seventh or 10 million liters of water. So if we put this into equation form, what I just said was that in neutral water, the concentration of H plus or H3O plus is equal to the concentration of hydroxide, OH minus, and that there are one mole of these ions in 10 to the seventh liters of water. And so if you do that division, that means that the concentration of H plus which is equal to the concentration of OH minus. At 25 degrees C, the concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. Remembering that molar means moles per liter, okay? So at 25 degrees C, the concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and the concentration of the hydroxide ion is also equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So continuing on, water is neutral, which means that H3O plus is equal to OH minus, and I apologize, I use these interchangeably, H plus and H3O plus. So there's something called the water dissociation constant. It is symbolized by a capital K sub W, so this is the dissociation constant of water, and it tells you the rate at which water dissociates. And the value of Kw is different for different temperatures. So we've been talking about the value for Kw at 25 degrees C. And at 25 degrees C, Kw is equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus. And in the previous slide, I pointed out that at 25 degrees C, the concentration is equal for pure water, and that it's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So if we take the value for H3O plus, 1 times 10 to the minus 7, the value of OH minus, 1 times 10 to the minus 7, multiply those together. When you're multiplying exponents, remember you add them, so minus 7 minus 7, we get Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, 10 to the minus 7, times 10 to the minus 7, and it's molarity squared. Again, weird units. So the water dissociation constant, Kw, is the rate at which water dissociates. It varies with temperature. That means that the value for Kw is different at different temperatures. Since the value of H3O plus is equal to OH minus at pure water, and the Kw uh, expression is Kw is equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus. So if you're ever asked to write the expression for the Kw for water, you would write Kw equals concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus. That was a favorite test question. So how does this relate to calculating pH? Well, let's define it. The definition of pH is the negative logarithm base 10 of the concentration of the hydronium ion. And the equation form of that would be pH is equal to 
minus the log base 10 of the hydronium ion concentration, remembering that these little bracket thingies mean molarity, moles per liter. So an example for pure water at 25 degrees C, pH, I said, is defined as minus the log base 10 of the concentration of H3O+. Plus. And since we can plug in that value, pH is minus the log base 10 of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. When you plug this number into your calculator and take the log of it, you would get negative 7. But pH is minus the log. So that means that the pH is equal to 7. Don't believe me, pause the video, take out your calculator, and plug it in. So pure water has a concentration of H3O+, plus, which is equal to the concentration of OH-, minus, and again, that's where we arrive at pH 7 for neutral water. So let's talk about logarithms. Hopefully in your math class, if you're taking Advanced Algebra 2 and Trig, you have talked about logarithms. So let's look at logarithms. The log base 10 of 1 is 0. I always use this to remind myself how this thing works. So how does it work? So I've drawn a little circle, and I'm going to try to illustrate this. Normally I would be doing this jumping around in class using a whiteboard. We don't have one. So what do we do? We say that the log base 10 of 1 is 0. That means that 10 raised to the 0 power equals 1. So 10 to the 0 equals 1. And again, I found this cutesy little illustration, which is basically restating what I did here, only without the cool pink circle, that if you have the log base b of x equals y, that means b raised to the y power equals x. Okay? So pH values. Acidic solutions have a pH less than 7. That means if the pH was 6.9, it would still be considered slightly acidic. Basic solutions have a pH greater than 7. That means 7.1 is still a little basic. And here is your basic scale with 7 being neutral. Why is 7 neutral again? Because a pH of 7 means that the concentration of H3O plus is 10 to the minus 7, and OH minus is 10 to the minus 7. And if they are equal, then it is neutral. And again, this is talking about values measured at 25 degrees C. So pH and OH. Since at 25 degrees C, the Kw is 1 times 10 to the 14th molar squared. Remember, concentration of H3O plus times OH minus. So that means that if you're calculating pH at 25 degrees C according to this equation where H plus concentration is equal to OH minus concentration, that would mean that the pH value would be 7, and the pH OH value would be 7, and then that would mean that the total pH would be 14. But if these numbers are varied, since at 25 degrees C, the value of Kw is 1 times 10 to the 14th, then we know that pH plus pOH always equals 14 when you are at 25 degrees C. So, in equation form, pH plus pOH equals 14. How does that help us? Well, that means if I know, for instance, that the pH was 5, then I could calculate the pOH because it would be 14 minus 5. And so then I could always calculate, using an antilog, what the concentration of the H plus ion is and what the concentration of the OH minus is. So this relationship allows us to determine the pH if the pOH is known, or the pOH if the pH is known. If the pH is pOH is 2, for instance, what is the pH? And that would be pH equals 14 minus pOH algebra. 14 minus 2 equals 12. So we would know at that point that the pH is equal to 12, meaning we have a basic solution. The pH scale continued. 
some common substances and their pH and hydronium ion concentration. pH means, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, from French meaning hydrogen power. So here is a pH scale, and I like to point out some things. So for instance, notice that um, stomach acid is a little bit above 1. Uh, 1 molar hydrochloric acid has a pH of 0. Milk over here is acidic. It's about 6.5. So if you have um, an upset stomach and you think drinking milk will help you, it won't. Baking soda is uh, basic. It's about 8.5. Notice that human blood is slightly basic, and I believe it's 7.4. And up here, milk of magnesia, which would be your antacids, are between 10 and 11. They're about 10.6. Household ammonia is up here, and one molar sodium hydroxide is pH 14. So understanding the log function a little bit more. Considering pH values of solutions that range in hydronium ion concentration from 1 times 10 to the minus 1 up to 1 times 10 to the minus 14, you'll notice that the pH value is equal to the exponent of the hydronium ion only with a positive value because log function is minus the log. Okay, So if we were to take the log of 10 to the minus 1, which is 0.1, we would get minus 1, and pH would be 1, because it's minus the log. So again, this is useful when you are given something like 1 times 10 to the minus 1, or 1 times 10 to the minus 2. However, it only works out when it's a nice, neat 1 times an exponent. For anything else, for instance, if you're given a value like 0 0.03 molar, please use your calculator log function button. So again, in calculating concentrations from pH, since you can calculate the pH from the hydronium ion concentration, can you do the reverse? Why, yes, of course. How? Rearrange the parent equation. So here, if pH is minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration, then minus the pH is the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And if we anti-log that, we get 10 to the minus pH is the hydronium ion concentration. Again, so 10 to the minus pH is the hydronium ion concentration, and 10 to the minus pOH would be your hydroxide ion concentration. And if you can calculate pOH from hydroxide, can you do the reverse? Yes, rearrange the parent equation, as I did in the last slide. So take the anti-log. So 10 to the minus pOH would give you the OH concentration. So here are our equations. pH minus the log of hydronium ion, pOH minus the log of hydroxide, hydroxide ion concentration 10 to the minus pOH, hydronium 10 to the minus pH, and pH plus pOH equals 14. I will give you these on worksheets as well, but these are the equations that allow you to navigate and remember that the brackets here when we're talking about concentration are referring to moles per liter. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.